In this class, <clears throat> we are going to speak about St. Augustine's moral theory and let us start things off by talking about happiness and God. What's the philosophical background that is present in St. Augustine's way of thinking about his moral theory? That philosophical background goes back to Epicureanism in the 4th century before Christ. This philosophical tendency defended the fostering of modest pleasures as means to reach tranquility. Okay, we are not supposed to hold back all our tendency to pleasure. We are not supposed to either to go for all the pressures we would like to have because that's not good. We need to find the halfway, the, the, the wise halfway so that you enjoy modest pleasures and that gives to you tranquility. So when you reach that tranquility because you battle and through virtue you get to, to control your pleasures, then you, you have this tranquility. Also, <clears throat> Epicureanism supported the idea of freedom from fear. You know, when you are set free from your fears, then you reach real quietness and happiness. They call this state of the mind ataraxia, when you are not afraid of anything and you don't suffer for anything, then you are free, you are set free from those fears and then you, you reach this ataraxia which is necessary for the soul and the body, you know, has to go through just modest pleasures to reach tranquility. So the ataraxia of the mind, the tranquility of the body, and then of course uh, for Epicureanism it's very important the absence of bodily pain. They thought that if there is bodily pain, it is impossible to be happy. So this is one of the uh, ways of thinking that is present in the, in the philosophy that St. Augustine studied. And besides that, there is, <clears throat> of course, Stoicism in the 3rd century before Christ. And Stoics defended the acceptance of the present moment as a way of living in happiness, with happiness. If you accept what happens to you at any time, then you are happy. And then you are supposed to control the dis or your desire for pleasure. You are supposed to control as well fear for pain. Okay, it's not a good idea to be afraid of pain, because if pain comes, you have to accept that as part of the present moment. And if your desire for pleasure is so big that you are afraid of pain, that desire for pleasure wouldn't be good. Okay, so it's about controlling the des of our desires for pleasure, controlling our fear for pain and accepting the present moment. Plus, the mind has to understand the world. If you understand, understand the world and you do your part on nature's plan and treat others fairly, then Stoics say you can reach eudaimonia in Greek. Eudaimonia in Greek means happiness. So all the, um, the Greek philosophy, so to speak, specifically Epicureanism and Stoicism, uh, was going after happiness. That's the, um, that's the philosophical background which is an influence in St. Augustine. And according to St. Augustine, of course, happiness has to do with God. It is happiness what we are going after. And what St. Augustine explains is it is only in God that you reach that happiness you are uh, going after. So in this sense, St. Augustine is contesting all the theories that uh, Epicureanism and Stoicism brought up. So, because after all, Epicureanism and Stoicism is turning to the body as a means to find there and the virtue, your happiness, right? But St. Augustine says, body is mutable. So, cannot be sufficient. The body cannot be sufficient to give me happiness. What I'm supposed to turn to is to the immutable good, which is God. That immutable good, which is God, is sufficient to give me that happiness I'm going after. So for St. Augustine, happiness is the possession of God. That's the, the real deal. Until you don't reach and possess God, you cannot say that you are happy. Okay, so the end of uh, St. Augustine's moral theory is not virtue, as it was in Epicureanism and Stoicism. For him, the real deal is you know, is to find and to possess the one who gives virtue, the one who gives virtue, which is God. So that would be the, the means to, to reach happiness. 
So for San Agustin, it's very important possession. Okay, um, unlike Greek philosophers, which supported some contemplation, theoretic contemplation of good, you know, for San Agustin, what counts is the possession of God, and that's what it's love. So that's why for San Agustin the will is very important in his moral theory because it is with our will that we reach out towards God. That's the real thing. And in that process of reaching out towards God, we receive grace. Because as we will see later on in this class, we cannot reach God unless we receive a specific grace. So happiness somehow is given. But what is important is that, is to find God and to possess him and that's love and San Agustin says pondus meum amor meus so San Agustin says that my weight my value as a person is my love so if I don't love my weight as person my value as person is nothing so for him what counts is to the possession of God which is the that, that's the real love Then let us uh, review what St. Augustine says about freedom and obligation. For St. Augustine, it's obviously clear that we have a free will, and with that free will, we have the capacity to turn to the immutable good, or, which is God, or we can turn to the goods of soul and body. Okay, so in this side, this immutable good, that could be God, in this side, we could turn to the goods of soul and body. The goods of soul without any reference any reference to God. Okay? There's contemplation of ideas, etc. And the goods of body, pleasures. So for St. Augustine, both possibilities, both actions, are voluntary actions. So it is one who decides to turn to the immutable good, to God, or to turn to the goods of soul and body. So that's something you do voluntarily. It's not something that happens. It's not something that happened to you. You know, No, <clears throat> you want to do that. So St. Augustine says, man is by his nature set towards God because God has given us our human nature and the human nature is set to reach out towards God. So it's up to us to make a choice. So the, the goal of finding happiness in St. Augustine passes through making a choice. And how do we make that choice? Here is the answer. For St. Augustine, there is in all of us awareness of moral standards and laws. Okay, so all of us have awareness of moral standards and laws. Why? Because they are impressed in the heart. According to St. Augustine, God has impressed on our hearts this awareness of moral standards and laws and as the ring you know impresses you know and passes into the wax yet without leaving the ring somehow that way god has impressed in our hearts these moral standards and laws in this context an Augustine says that we have been touched by the splendor of the omnipresent truth so god has touched us god has enlightened us with the splendor of the omnipresent truth. That's why we can, we can know eternal theoretical truth and practical truth. And St. Augustine says that man is meant to follow that light. So there is freedom to follow that light, but at the same time there is obligation because God gives me that light and I am aware somehow of those moral principles. It is deep down written in my heart that I shouldn't kill. It is written deep down in my heart that I should worship God. It is deep down written in my heart that I shouldn't steal, and so on. So precisely because it's written, it's impressed on my heart by God, I have freedom on one hand to follow that, but at the same time I have obligation <clears throat> because God never uh, prevent us from prevents us from receiving that light. Then, of course, there is the need of grace. We are finite creatures and we are trying to reach to the infinite being. The best option, of course, according to St. Augustine, would be to turn to the immutable good, which is God. But we are still finite creatures. We are yet finite, 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 finite creatures. 
So in order to move from here to here, we need grace. Okay, so that's something we cannot just reach God out of our virtue. Virtue is not enough. So St. Augustine says, Law was given to the finite creature that the grace might be sought. So when we see the law, when we realize this is the law, the Ten Commandments, we realize that without God's grace, we cannot fulfill that law, right? So the law is telling me that I need to, to seek grace. And on the other hand, St. Augustine says, the grace is given that the law might be fulfilled. So grace is the, mean, is the means for us to really to fulfill the law and to find God. Now let us say something about evil and the way St. Augustine understands evil. Mm, evil is something that has to do with the will. When I turn to the immutable good, I'm doing what is good. When I'm turning to the body and to the mutable good of the soul and the body, is when I'm doing evil. So, but what would be a good definition of evil? Because evil is not something positive, okay? Created by God. God has created positive things. God has created matter. The matter which came out from God's hands, as we studied in previous classes about on St. Augustine, that matter is good. And God creates also these seminal reasons, these germs of things which unfold uh, down the line during time. So that's what God created. And one of the things that God created was human will. But God didn't create the consequences of our free actions. That's what St. Augustine says. So God created the will, not the, the wrong uh, choices of the will. So evil is not really a thing because it's not, a, it's not a positive thing created by God. The will is a thing, but evil is the consequence of the will. So God is not responsible for that evil, you know. So St. Augustine defines evil as privation of right order in the created will. And this is an interesting definition because if evil is privation of right order in the created will then God creator is not responsible for evil. The one responsible for evil is the person who made that wrong choice. Plus, if evil is privation of the right order in the created will, there is no need to invent an evil principle responsible for evil. And that's what Mani Keys, this school with which San Agustin was at the very beginning of his life, uh, well, they created, they invented this evil principle which justifies the presence of evil in the world. But that's not true according to St. Augustine. The good is, sorry, the world is good. The things that we see in the world are good, created by God. But the free choices of people and the ones which are not uh, according to God's plan, that hasn't been created by God. That's the responsibility of the, of the person. So there is no God responsible for personal evil. And God never created this evil. So it's interesting to to point out uh, this theory of St. Augustine defining evil as privation of right order in the created will is against Manichees, as we have said and it's a, it's a very interesting definition because uh, the extent of St. Augustine's explanation of evil went down all down to the Middle Ages to the, through the Scholastics to the modern age and it's present in Leibniz so it was a powerful explanation of evil and finally let us say something about the theory of San Agustin about the two cities. Okay, mm, San Agustin says that there are two options. Either people love God, and that's the principle of morality, or the other option is to fall in away from God, which could be the, the, essence of, the essence of evil. So principle of morality, love of God. The essence of evil, falling away from God. There are these two options. So those who decide to love God, they prefer God versus self. And those who decide to turn to the goods of the soul and the body, they prefer themselves versus God. So at the end of the day, in the world, there are people who go, who made, who make an option for God, and there are people who make an option for themselves. So that's the 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 contrast of this world. And that con that decision, as we know very well, has to do with the will. It happens in our will. And those who go for God, 
they would be represented in the metaphor of Jerusalem, whereas those who go for evil or for self, they are represented in Babylon. Okay, so that's what St. Augustine says that history is all about, is the contrast and the battle between those two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. Uh, for St. Augustine, history is really important because in history there was fall with original sin and there was redemption and little by little in history there is growth of the body of Christ which happens throughout history. So the study of history for St. Augustine is very important and somehow God's plan of redemption is unfolded in history. So St. Augustine thinks that history has an, important, an importance that we have to take it on take into account. And he defines his philosophy of history by saying the philosophy of history is the study of the spiritual and moral significance of historical phenomena and events. I repeat, philosophy of history would be, would under, would be understood in San Agustin as the study of the spiritual and moral significance of historical phenomena and events.